Hello everyone. Many people ask me that I want to become a psychologist or clinical psychologist. But is the entrance exam difficult? Is it possible for me to crack the entrance? How do I know if I become a good psychologist or not? To know the answer, you have to observe few things. Do you enjoy watching videos related to psychology or mental health? When you see the book of psychology, do you have a curiosity to know who is the author? Want to take that particular book home with you? Have you always been curious to know about human behavior? Would it be a matter of pride to add psychologist or clinical psychologist with your name? If this thing happens to you, then definitely your interest will make you a successful psychologist. Today, in this video, we will try to understand the difference between apraxia and aphasia in very simplified manner. After watching this tutorial video, you will never confuse between aphasia and apraxia. So let's begin. Aphasia is a loss or impairment of language because of damage to those areas of the brain that are responsible to produce and process language. It can affect individuals' speech, writing, and ability to understand language. Some people with aphasia have difficulty in only one area of communication, such as trouble putting words together into meaningful sentences trouble reading or difficulty understanding what others are saying. And there are various cause of aphasia and aphasia can occur suddenly after a stroke, head injury or brain surgery. A stroke is one of the most common cause, right? And sometimes person develop aphasia more slowly then suddenly, just because of brain tumor, brain infection, or sometimes just because of progressive neurological disorders like Alzheimer's disease. There are various symptoms of aphasia, but more common symptoms are like first. First is difficulty in finding right word. Second, Trouble understanding what other people saying or face difficulty following conversation. Third, putting words in the wrong order. Fourth, facing difficulty in reading. Fifth, mixing up sound in words. We can take one example to understand how they are mixing sound. So they will say mass header instead of headmaster. So correct word is headmaster, but they are saying mass header. So these kind of mixing, you know, you can find that will be inaccurate. And there are two broad categories of aphasia. First is fluent and second is non-fluent. And there are several types within these groups. Like first is broca aphasia. Second, vernic aphasia, transcortical motor aphasia, global aphasia, conduction aphasia, anomic aphasia, transcortical sensory aphasia. So there are various types and I made a detailed video on Broca and vernic aphasia. So you can watch that video and the link is given in description. And I will make a detailed video on different types of aphasia soon. Most probably, the next video will be on type of aphasia. Now we will take a look on apraxia. In apraxia, people face difficulty to perform certain motor movements, even though their muscles are normal. Person understand request or command and they are willing to perform the task, but they face difficulty. That means they don't have any difficulty in comprehension and in muscles, but they are unable to use their muscles. 
there are various types of apraxia like ideomotor apraxia conceptual apraxia bucofacial apraxia ideational apraxia constructional apraxia oculomotor apraxia verbal apraxia so there are various types of apraxia but we will talk about only apraxia of speech because apraxia of speech is similar to aphasia and individual face difficulty understanding right or individual face difficulty to discriminate aphasia and apraxia of speech that's why we will talk about apraxia of speech only so with apraxia of speech a person finds it difficult or impossible to move their mouth and tongue to speak this happens right this happens even though the person has the desire to speak and their mouth and tongue muscles are physically able to form words so there are no any issues in muscles right tongue muscles you know muscles related to uh, speech but they are unable to present or they face difficulty to communicate and there are various symptoms but common symptoms are first difficulty saying long words they distort or change sounds excessive use of non verbal forms of communication inconsistencies in speech like uh, they will be able to present the word correctly in one situation but do a struggle or will face a struggle in another situation or they will face a struggle next time and if childhood apraxia of speech is there then few specific symptom will be there that we can find only in childhood apraxia like limited vocabulary grammatical problems problems with fine motor skills and in coordination problem with reading the spelling and writing clumsiness right so all these symptoms we can find in children and when we talk about the cause of apraxia so cause of apraxia is not so clear but according to the available researches there could be signaling related issues between brain and muscles right brain and muscles between all those muscles right that we use for speaking and few researchers suggesting a stroke neurological disorders and also genetic connections so cause of apraxia is not clear right not so clear but according to available researches as i mentioned right there could be the problem in signaling between brain and muscles right a stroke neurological disorders and genetic connection could be possible cause of apraxia apraxia is sometimes confused with aphasia right and this is the topic of this particular video right you are here to understand differences between apraxia and aphasia right that confusion can be complicated by the fact that the two conditions can occur together so now it's time to understand a specific differences between apraxia and aphasia people with apraxia and aphasia right in these two condition might both have difficulty expressing themselves with words but there are significant differences we can describe aphasia as a problem in which person face difficulty to understand or use words that means in aphasia problem will be in understanding right or using the words so it make it hard for someone to speak read and write just because they are unable to understand the words just because they are unable to use the word so it is really difficult for them to speak to read or write but apraxia does not describe a problem with language comprehension or weakness in muscles so in apraxia 
people face difficulty to initiating and perform the movement that is required to make a speech. So they face problem in a speech without having comprehension and muscles related issue. So in aphasia, individual face difficulty in comprehension. But in apraxia, they don't have problem in comprehension. So these are the you know, major differences between aphasia and apraxia. So yes, there are similarity, but hopefully by now you are aware. But if you have any doubt, let me know in comment box. I will try to you know, answer them. And uh, thank you so much from the whole team of UPS Education to make us a reliable community for psychology, right? Keep learning, keep moving. 